This is music, and this is Made of Steel, episode 3. Welcome to the third episode of Made of Steel, a series of videos where I go through my collection of band-made releases, physical and digital. Today we're going to have a look at Brand New Made, and, you know, spoiler, this is another album that I just love unconditionally, so there you go. <clears throat> Before that, uh, it's recommendation time. A lot of you have recommended that I check out um, Love Bites. I am actually familiar with Love Bites. Some of you thought that I'd never even heard of them before. I don't know where that came from, but I appreciate the recommendation. I am familiar with them. I've heard like a handful of songs. And from what I can hear, the level of musicianship is through the roof. They are on my bucket list of bands. I want to explore more. But just before them on the bucket list, we have Mary's Blood. So I'm going to check them out first, buy some releases by Mary's Blood. And then I'll turn my attention to Love Bites. But thanks for the recommendation. In return, I'll recommend Narcotic Greets, Twist of Fate. This is Japanese melodic thrash metal uh, with a singer that sounds a bit like Klaus Meine from um, The Scorpions, except this guy can hit some really high notes. Uh, if you're not familiar with thrash metal, think, um, th think Beauty and the Beast the fast section towards the end or think real existence the fast parts in the guitar solo this is an entire album that sounds like those fast parts so it's aggressive it has some face punching riffs some great um some great uh, guitar work on the lead guitars some great vocals lots of melody actually this could be a pretty good entry point into Japanese thrash metal if you like Japanese rock but you are not familiar with thrash metal because it is quite accessible. If you like thrash metal already and you like your Megadeth, your Onslaughts in Search of Sanity, your your uh, Anthrax, you know, things like that, uh, Metal Church and so on and so forth, I think you will appreciate this album too. So that's my recommendation, Twice of Fate by narcotic greed let's turn to uh, brand new made by bandmate so as far as i understand uh they they have pretty much the same team of external songwriters as on the previous release and um this is the first uh, release where they have one song that they wrote completely by themselves as well and they have some song uh, some lyrics uh, credits as well on some of the other songs um, the style is very similar to New Beginning, uh, except maybe that they have toned down the pop influence even more. You still have the pop elements there for sure, but you have, there's hardly any pop punk, for example. A lot of the big, catchy, uh, poppy um, choruses that I love have sort of um, been replaced a bit by some more rock belting choruses that I also love. So win-win i guess um so that's one difference but other than that there's an emphasis on the groove there's an emphasis on the funk there's an emphasis on you know hard rock and and melody um now i have this in physical format so let's just do some some music collectors nerdery first this is the booklet as you may have noticed this is the type b version of the cover there's a type A version as well. The the uh, release I have is the JPU Records uh, reissue. So that's the European release. And they've opted for the type B cover. And the difference is just that the members of the band are sitting in slightly different positions. So for example, Miku is on the floor here. Uh, on type A, she's actually sitting on the swing. Akane is sitting on the swing here. In on the type A cover, she's standing up and Saiki is standing up here on the other versions she is sitting down on the swing so you know just kind of some fun uh variant stuff going on there the 
The uh, booklet is very simple, just uh, the lyrics and then, you know, credits and things like that on white paper. Um, the JPU records version has an additional uh, insert, which is this one, uh, which renders the lyrics in Romanji, and it also has English translations of the lyrics. The disc just looks like this, and this is what the back looks like. And I don't know if this is different um, from the Type A versions. So that's just the collection nerdery. The music itself, as I said, very similar to a New Beginning, but with some differences. Uh, there's a bit of an emphasis on groove and hard rock here, I would say. Um, and as I said, I love this album unconditionally. If we just go through the songs uh, one by one, um, The Nonfiction Days is the opener. I think they have a music video for that one. That's just a great way to open an album, just an upbeat, hard rocker with some quite aggressive drumming. I mean, Akane is really now in her element. Uh, she, she's just, you know, has a lot of space to just go crazy, which I appreciate. So that's really awesome. Uh, it has some pretty good actually great vocal melodies in the verse uh, that are catchy and memorable and the chorus this is one of the songs where they still have those big catchy sing-along choruses uh, and and the chorus in this song is i would say fantastic i love just humming along to it uh, there's also a very quite heavy bridge with a, a riff that's very groovy and i don't know if you guys agree with me on this one but the riff is quite reminiscent of uh some of the stuff that helmet would do back in the 90s uh, there's a really tasty guitar solo uh, as well by the way in the song so non-fiction days a great song in my opinion it's followed by look at me which is more of a funky groovy hard rocker it has a bit of a sneaky verse i think uh, the chorus is just a head bobbing rock belting chorus and it's very sing-along friendly so i appreciate that the bridge is really cool because the bridge just switches into sort of sort of 70s rock inspired uh stuff and there are even some elements of 80s jazz rock which i really like actually so look at me is another great song uh order is the next song that's just a groove fest it's based on a quite simple but just awesome uh, groovy riff um more great drumming here uh akana does some great bass double bass drum work again she doesn't go ego or crazy it fits the song right um and there's some pretty f sort of cool funky bass stuff going on and a quite heavy groovy riff in the bridge and again we have another sort of sort of just tasty lead guitar work so order a great song also has some pretty cool like you know breaks with sort of vocals in between and again you can't help but going you know singing along to, to you know so to another great song probably non-fiction days order two of my favorite songs on this album uh it's followed by Brand New Road. So I guess that's the closest thing to a, to a title track here. Uh, it's kind of funky, kind of groovy. Uh, and I would say um, it's quite a 70s rock song, actually. I mean, there are elements from, from 70s rock. And, and the bridge is really sort of a sneaky kind of like swing uh kind of thing right so they, they borrow from swing jazz i guess and it has a nice bass solo as well um and i don't know if i would go as far as maybe maybe even i don't know am i wrong here i'm detecting maybe a slight black sabbath influence from the more kind of like when they're more a bit more funky and from the early catalog and maybe maybe a slight stoner rock influence i don't know am i wrong it's certainly very groovy, uh, Brand New Road. Uh, it's followed by, I guess, Yuregu. Uh, Yuregu has a great build-up uh, in the beginning, uh, and that's because of the drums, so it kind of like increases very, very slowly in intensity. Um, and there's another song that just has an awesome, just rock-belting chorus, I think. Um, and great drumming. That's the best part of the song, I think. The drumming 
and the guitar solo because the guitar solo is just like almost like a biker rock almost like noisy guitar solo so i mean uh kanami is really i th i kind of feel like maybe she's experimenting a bit here right she's the most interesting i think uh, musician in this band to observe her progression i think i think she's always been talented she's always been good but i think she was kind of holding back in the beginning maybe she wasn't confident enough as a lead guitarist and i can certainly sympathize with that i am myself more of a rhythm guitarist but i always end up in situations where i have to step up uh, and also be the lead guitarist and I just, I don't feel comfortable yeah comf comfortable no problem but I don't feel confident in my skills as a lead guitarist so I always take an Adrian Smith kind of approach I have to write my guitar solos so I, th I maybe she's doing something similar right uh, sort of exploring her options as a guitarist so really interesting to observe her sort of um, uh, progression as a musician uh, but you know a great tasty uh, but also kind of noisy biker rock guitar solo in in, in uh, Yuragu. Great song. Uh, Freedom is another song with kind of biker rock tendencies. And this time it's in the uh, main riff. And that's kind of like almost like an 80s heavy metal hard rock main riff. Uh, biker rock, uh, you know, just going on a road trip on the highway kind of riff. Really like that riff. Uh, the chorus is very Japanese, I would say. Um, the melody is kind of very typical, I think, of Japanese rock and the vocal melody, Japanese rock and, and Japanese hard rock. And we have another case of their drumming following this uh, drum pattern. We have a uh, like, you know, a one, two, one, two bass and snare drum. And then you have the hi-hat syncopated in between. So uh, it's, a, it's a nice touch. I like that they also draw on, you know, their Japanese backgrounds. It would be boring if they just, you know, went, you know, try to do american rock you know what i mean this is japanese hard rock after all so i actually very i like that very much in the in the chorus uh, so uh, there's another fine guitar solo here as well so freedom a great song uh, and the next one is uh before yesterday uh, now the title may you know sounds maybe a bit ballady but it's not really a ballad um it is kind of melancholic but it's also quite up tempo so i like that it has very dynamic drumming especially towards the end uh some people have compared akane to john bonham they've said she's a modern day john bonham uh i think she's a modern day akane because you know she's her own drummer you know so she reserves deserves maybe also reserves but she deserves credit for doing her own thing but i mean that's a still that's a huge a compliment if somebody compares you to john bonham so uh great dynamic drumming in the before yesterday uh i think this is one of the few songs that have a bit of pop punk maybe emo 90s 2000s emo uh going on kind of like american emo rock maybe uh in the chorus uh but you know a very good vocal melody again and uh and an awesome groovy riff uh in the bridge uh so again you know they've they've they got the groove down right they got the funk down they got the groove down excellent stuff and the, the vocal performance is is very good in this song too it's very emotional to the point that at some there, there's some part in the song where she says you used to make me smile uh so convincingly that as a listener you sort of almost start feeling bad for for not being able to make her smile anymore and then you have to go hold on i, I mean it's not me you know i don't know maybe i'm the only one experiencing that uh but a great song before yesterday and the last song, Alone, that's the one that they wrote completely on their own. And this is a great song. This is certainly one of my favorite songs on this album too, if not my favorite on this album. And one thing I noted immediately is that something that's kind of absent uh, from the other songs in this album, it does appear every now and then in some of the previous albums, but not to the same extent. In Alone, they make use of of one thing i really love as a music fan twin guitar harmonies in the main riff just in the beginning because i'm an iron maiden fan right so i really appreciate that 
So that's, I think, one thing they sort of introduced on their own into their style. And it's a great sort of uh, a twin guitar uh, melodic hook just in the beginning. Uh, again, great dynamic drumming. Uh, some cool bass parts. Everyone is given a chance to shine here. Um, and uh, it's very catchy. Um, it has a bit of, of, of a, I would say, roller coaster kind of up and down structure in terms of intensity, soft parts, some harder parts. That's absolutely great. I mean, they're really showing that these ladies are good songwriters, right? Uh, They've learned a lot. Uh, a lot of people pointed this out. They've learned a lot from working with those professional external songwriters, you know, and that's absolutely great because because um, these ladies have skills as songwriters. And if they've learned them from working with external songwriters, that's just absolutely great. You know, um, I would say this one has the best guitar solo on the album. Maybe I'm just biased because I know they wrote wrote it uh, themselves but this has the the best guitar solo for my money this is uh, Kanami really shines in that guitar solo um, it really showcases what a great guitarist she actually is all the other stuff she did on this album tasty good shows her talent but I just really like the solo much much more it doesn't mean I dislike the other solos but I really love the solo in, in this song and the vocal lines are also very catchy. I mean, I think even if you hate Bandmate and everything they stand for, if you listen to this song, you know, I, I bet you you'll catch yourself going, oh, 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 just try. Uh, it's a great song. Alone is a great song. I love this album. Now I'm a bit confused about its status because some people say this is their full length debut. Other people say and it's a mini album. So I just don't know anymore. Um, the other subsequent albums have, have more songs on him. But, you know, this one still has eight songs on it. And actually that applies to the previous ones too. And in my day, when I was young, uh, eight songs was actually kind of standard for a lot of metal albums. So I just decided in my world, this is their third full-length album. I'm not going to fight you on it, uh, though. Um, so great stuff. This one, by the way, uh, the JPU records version has real existence in a live, uh, version. So that's great too. So overall, it's an album. I love unconditionally great stuff, great, tasty, melodic, groovy, hard rock, not a lot of pop elements here, uh, more sort of rock oriented, uh, choruses, uh, but you do have a couple of songs with these big uh, choruses as well uh, highlights for me the drumming is exceptionally awesome the vocals but they're always great on bandmate songs uh, and albums uh, the bass is also very prominent there are a couple of bass solos some great funky slapping and popping bass every now and then Konami's guitar solos shine more on this album and um, she is just re really interesting to observe her sort of evolution as a musician. I will maintain that she's had the talent all along, probably. She's just working out her style. I don't know if you guys agree with me. Uh, it still has a heavy guitar tone. Uh, and it's still upbeat, feel good, just an enjoyable album. I think maybe... Uh, if people are put off a bit by the previous two albums because they prefer a bit more traditional hard rock, I don't know. I think there might be some songs in this one that that will appeal to that crowd. Again, brand new made, unconditionally uh, an album I love. A historic album as well because it has the first song they wrote themselves and it's, if not the best song on the album, one of the best songs on the album as well. So... Brand new made. Next time we're going to have a look at Just Bring It. For now, thanks for watching.